But that's definitely not me. I just say to myself, this is like a one moment thing if you fail. As in like, we can make up for this. Yeah. You know? So I actually started out volunteering here with Kids Church. Mm. As much as I enjoyed it, I didn't think I was that good at it. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't be like, you you know, (laughs) and I thought, okay, maybe not for kids, right? You know? It's for your good that I'm not in Kids Church. Yes. (laughs) So, um, that I put aside, you mm-hmm. know, and then I just kind of, under the leadership of Pastor Bernard, I, I think I flourished in that role. Yeah. So it's it's one thing to volunteer in ministry, and it's a different thing yes. to be a full-time ministry. And so how does that transition okay. kind of… Again, I didn't know how all of this worked. So <laughs> I just volunteered. I volunteered. So I remember they gave me at this time… and. Some churches have this, some churches don't, like a love offering, yeah. right? I was shocked. No, no, this is for real. So the admin came to me <laughs> with a form and, and some money and said, this is for you, please sign it. And I'm like, oh, this is like, I feel so guilty and like, I'm doing this out of like, love for, love the, Lord. for the Lord. Like, I can't take this money, right? You know, right? And the admin was like, oh, just take it. You know, like, this is normal. It's called the love offering. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to speak to Pastor Bernard. I don't need, I, you know, I didn't do it for this, right? You know, um, but that was just me getting used to it. And most of it, love offering is to help, like, with transportation I get it. I get it, and yeah. things like that. I didn't know that. So that's what the admin had to explain to me. She's like, this is for your food, for your transport. Like, oh, no, it's okay. I'm getting McDonald's after this. It's fine. It's totally fine. Right, and I got a car. It's all cool. It's all good. Yeah. Right, um, and I'm not. I'm not saying that you shouldn't take it. Yeah, I'm, but I'm just saying at that time it was a an it, adjustment. And for it's me. a foreign concept. Yeah, like, I didn't know. Guess, I didn't right. know that there was such a thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even know churches even hired people. Yeah. That's how aloof I was to this mm-hmm. new world. Right. Mm-hmm. I thought everyone was doing it for the glory of God and like you know rallying together. <laughs> That's what I thought. Right. Yeah. Um, so then the pastor at the time, Pastor Bernard, he said, oh, my daughter saw you, his lovely daughter Hannah, saw you and says that you should lead youth, right? I was working full time, right? Mm-hmm. So he's like, you know, you should work with the church, right? I was so shocked. <laughs> not, not shocked because it was an honor, but like, are you for real? <laughs> I didn't like get all that education to work for the church, <laughs> right? True. Now, I know you, every, you, people are going to laugh watching this and say that I was like an arrogant whatever, but come on now. Like, it was all new for me, you yeah, know, yeah, right? Yeah. I thought, I'm not working for the church, right, you know? <laughs> and so he was very persistent. Let's put it that way. And I won't go into detail, but I'll, I'll tell you off camera how he was persistent. But he was persistent and… Thank you, Pastor Bernard, yes, for being persistent. Yes, and eventually <laughs> um, I did take on the role. I think… For me personally, and I know it's different for everybody, getting the, the uh, being pay, on paid staff was not much different from volunteering. Mm-hmm. I, I put the same energy. Yeah. Um, what, what made it different was now you have staff meetings and like you know you all the other stuff. The yeah, yeah, all the other stuff. But it wasn't really uh, you know uh, anything different or anything. Um, but I think uh, once I realized like, oh, I really want to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had already, I guess, not made peace, but I remember saying to myself, yeah, I'll try this for, I, again, I was trying. Even though I was on staff, I thought, I'll just try this. I'm still young, you know. Um, but trying out ended up being nine years. <laughs> so <laughs> That's a long, that's a long probation time. period. Yeah. That's why when people say, do you want to go back to corporate? And I said, I really don't know what a balance sheet looks like anymore. Like, <laughs> maybe there's new regulation, new standards. I don't know any of them. So, um, yeah, that, that's the transition. But it wasn't that hard for me. Be- no. um, and I, I want to make sure I'm not, uh, people don't get the idea that I'm saying being paid for ministry is like anything bad. With I'm just saying, that no, the, my you're, mindset, you're with, like, yeah, the two of my us. mindset at that time <laughs> yeah. was like, as long as I receive enough, I remember mm-hmm. say, discussing with my my dad. He's just yeah. like, just make sure you have enough for for daily living. Yeah, 
right? Because this is ministry. I was like, okay, you know, and it was. So, um, yeah, obviously, I'm not going to lie. There was a huge lifestyle adjustment here, <laughs> right? That's right. A huge one, right? <laughs> yeah. um, this is how ridiculous it was. Uh, back in corporate days, I would walk into a closed store and be like, I'll have that, 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 and then have stuff in my closet with the tag still on, you know, like, you know, because I bought it, but, you know, all that stuff. So when I entered ministry, I learned a lot about modest living mm -hmm. and, you know, money management, but not so money management. Saying, but, right? saying no to things. Saying, saying no to things. <laughs> and you know what? I was okay with that. Yeah. See, I think when you find your calling and your passion, the things that appear like a sacrifice aren't a sacrifice, really. Mm. It's okay. It's okay that I don't get to buy that Gucci bag. Not that I've, not like I ever could afford it, but like <laughs> it's not a you know not a problem. You know, ten holidays become one, or maybe no holidays. <laughs> you know, right? But it well, didn't matter. Just your holidays, because if you know, if when you're a youth pastor, your holidays cannot coincide with yes. with teens having holidays and yes. want to hang out with you. Exactly. And all the teens are nosy. Like, who are you going to Bali with? Like, you know, <laughs> like who's there? You know, like it's just. But um, it was a huge adjustment. But yeah. again, I always tell people, if you do what you love, things that the world say is a sacrifice, it's mm -hmm. actually not. A, it doesn't feel like one. So I have no regrets of all So of that. let us fast forward nine years. Ooh. And then you decided to leave the international church that you were yep. um, pastoring in and then go get a degree. Okay, so... So I'm like... That's a completely different kind of like, it's still in ministry, Street. but but that's yeah. quite the pivot after. So that just proves that my life is like follow, just following the flow, mm -hmm. right? So I forgot to mention that I was actually a youth pastor for maybe four or five years. Mm -hmm. The rest, I had already transitioned into adult ministry, mm. right? And it's probably a good thing because, you know, the older you get, the less relevant you are to a 15-year-old, right? They're like... Melissa, do you know how to dab? No, right? You know, right? <laughs> the thing is, and I, I don't, don't want, want to do that. I don't want to look stupid doing <laughs> those true. things, right? You know, like doing the hands, right? <sighs> but I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean. So, um, right. So before, in those nine years, because uh, one of my strengths is um, a learner. Mm -hmm. So I actually did a lot of self-study. I took like a counseling course yeah. um, as well online. Uh, people don't know that. So I was like serving, but then doing these midnight classes, you know. I read everything. I was very aware mm -hmm. that I don't know what's going on. Mm. So I read everything that there yeah. was about ministry. Like youth ministry, how to do the games, how to like engage with teenagers. I read everything. Um, even when we go to conferences, Hillsong Conference, I would take notes like crazy. I would watch everything. How do they do it? Like, you know. Mm. So... I still learned, and obviously my pastor also discipled me. Mm -hmm. But then hit, I think it was year eight, or maybe year seven. Um, I'm not going to say I burnt out, but I think I reached a point where I said to myself, I want to do this for a long time, probably yeah. till the day I die. But I, I, need some ref I need to be refreshed. Yeah. And I need to fill myself with new things, mm -hmm. right? So I want to learn more. And actually, in the nine years, I had actually asked to go abroad for mm -hmm. my studies. But because of things, it got canceled. Mm. So it was only until year nine, I just dropped the bombshell and said, um, I want to go. Peace yeah, I said, peace <laughs> out. No, not really. People think it's like that, that I said, peace out, I'm out of here. You know, like, but no, there was a lot of conversations before that. Yeah, yeah. And um, I had set my mind, you know, I want to study um, there was a lot of people saying, like, you really want, do you really want to go? Why do you have to study again? You already have a job. You already have a position, you know, right? But I think people didn't, I was thinking long term. Mm. I was thinking if I go study more in, and experience more, when I come back, I'm going to be an even better pastor. People didn't see that mm. long-term thinking. They're just thinking like… Stability. Stability, it's yes. It's stable. Yeah, what for? What <laughs> for? Right. right, you know. So some people were like, you know, and, and obviously because I loved the church and the, and the people, I loved them. And so a lot of them wanted me to stay. Mm. Maybe some of them were happy I left. I don't know. <laughs> but no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking, right? You know, but… That I, um, that they were a bit like, you know, oh, why don't you just stay? You don't need to go, mm -hmm. right? 
But I left and um, I had the time of my life uh, studying for a year and a half. And so there was, you had a break and then you came back and you're not a pastor at a church. Yes. What are you doing now? I'm like super duper unemployed, right? <laughs> So there's there's an unemployed and there's super duper, duper unemployed, unemployed, right? Um, yes, because like when you're a pastor, like it's not like I'm gonna go back, you know, into the industry. Like it's not that, right? <laughs> yeah. So, okay, as with everybody, I did not know the pandemic was gonna happen, right? Yeah, <laughs> COVID. Yeah. So when I was at Hillsong College, that's where I went. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought I was just gonna go back. Uh, you know, uh, you know, approach some people and uh, and apply for ministry jobs. You know, I didn't think it was going to be that hard, to, to be honest, right? Then I come back and uh, okay, it's a bit hard now, <laughs> right? You know, so um, I wasn't worried though. Mm-hmm. I always feel ministry is a is something that if you have if you have the gift and the opportunities, you can always do. You don't okay. need to be employed to to minister, really, yeah. right? So. When I, you have to be employed to eat. To eat, true. Now, I'll get back to that. Okay. I'll get back to that. So then I got back and uh, we're in the middle of, I can't even remember the terms anymore. PPKM, PSPB. Is that Lockdown. Right? PSS, PSS, no, that's a soccer thing, <laughs> right? Right. That's not. No, no. PPKM. Yes. Bukan PPKM. That's yeah. a subject. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Subject discontinued. Cool. Discontinued. discontinued. Right, I think. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean. Yes, the quarantine. Yes. The lockdown. Yes. So when I got back, a lot of my mentees, like uh, girls especially, uh, contacted me and said, oh, they're struggling getting through this season. Pandemic, yeah. And no one knew how to be a Christian without attending church. Well, not, yeah. not no one, but a lot of people struggled, right? So they were like, oh... How do I keep on track with my faith during this hard time? When you feel so isolated. Yeah, like how do I worship alone? That's so weird. (laughs) Like, you know, right? That's right. There's no band, you know, there's no smoke screen. I'm in my pajamas. Yes, like, like, hari minggu tu, like, do I just sit in front of the laptop? Like, you know, what do I do, right? (laughs) That's right. So then I invited a few girls to Zoom Mm -hmm. and we we prayed because people had sick relatives and all that, right? And the unknown of the, the pandemic unknown, yeah. and things like that. And it was just good to like share yeah. and everything. So this is this is how funny it was. I thought only maybe three girls would like pop up. Yeah. A prayer meeting, right? It sounds so spiritual, right? <laughs> there was like 12 girls, like, oh. you know. And we ended up, we were in that group for a year. Every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? Yes. Okay. Well, there's nothing else to do. That's right. right? <laughs> During that time, right? You're stuck at home. Hillary was in it. Sorry, right? You know, you know there's nothing else to do, right? Then um, towards the end of the year, um, I remember thinking, I think I'm going to teach a Bible study. You know, just mix it up a little bit. Again, I thought maybe only 10 girls would do it, yeah. right? Because Bible stu- every time people hear Bible study, they think it's going to be boring and everything, right? So I started it, and 24 girls, you know, to the point I had to like split the, the classes. Mm. So that kind of spoke to me. I, I remember thinking a pastor or ministers can either take advantage of the change in people during this pandemic, or when it ends... You just continue to do the old things that you were doing before, yeah. right? And I remember saying to myself, I'm going to ride this wave. Yeah. Everyone's hungry for the word. Everyone wants Christ-centered community. We're going to ride this wave. Yeah. So towards the end of the year, and Carlo probably doesn't remember this. I, we were yes, chilling Carlo is, out. Is here. Carlo is <laughs> behind the screen, like, you know, right? Um, he's my friend. Like, Carlos said, why don't we make this like a proper like ministry or something like that? Give it a name, whatever. Mm. And well, that's you? <laughs> well, no, he kind of like, we just talked about it, right? Okay. And um, beginning of Jan- beginning of 2021, um, Life and Grace Project was established. Mm-hmm. And it was all online classes. And I just, um, I think one of my strengths is consist- consistency. Yeah. So I just do it over and over, and I and I got better as yeah. a facilitator too. You know, obviously yeah. everyone's rough when they begin. You know, yeah. I kind of learn how to keep people engaged and everything. Um, so that's how it, it started. So 
There was no plan to do that. Yeah. Again, it's about just saying yes and just trying to mm-hmm. do something, you know. Um, Although that, I feel like I, I, what I wanted to point out was uh, compared to the first, that, that first transition from corporate to yep. uh, being on staff at a church, that was somebody else offering you and yes. you saying yes, yes to different opportunities. Mm. But this time around, it's you going out from a, maybe a stable position to like... A solo career. Solo career. <laughs> I was um, in a band before that. Yes. Like, you know. Um, and so mm. that, there's no outside factor. It was just like yeah. you. So how did your faith, how did God mm. kind of like assure, assure you? Like, okay, this is, yeah. this is a yes. Yes. Um, that's a really good question. I have those. Because, <laughs> because I'm not usually a... a I'm not usually, uh, I don't initiate new, a lot of new things, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not going to say I was scared, but it was exciting, but it was daunting at the same time to start something new on my own. And it looked a little bit different. And then you don't have the resources that you had before. The, you know, All I had, uh, to be honest, was all the, I guess, how do you say it, the, the seeds that I sowed eight years before, mm-hmm. as in like the people that I know, the people that I've like mentored, that's all yeah. I had, and my, real, my credibility and, yeah. and all that stuff, right? So um, it was daunting and obviously a lot of praying and then again, confirmation from people. Mm. So I received very kind comments saying how the prayer meetings helped them yeah. during the pandemic. Yeah. They enjoyed the Bible study. So I kind of use that to gauge like, oh, okay, maybe this is working, you know. It's, it's a confirmation that you are on the right doing track is or something. meeting a need. Meeting a need. And that's how it started, really. Yes. Like I said, like, we're going to ride this wave. Everyone is hungry for the word. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not the most popular angle, I guess, you know. Right, uh, but and I it's felt, not the superstar pastor ministry. Yeah, I mean worldwide thing. Yes, um, but I I thought okay, it's okay. There's I'll, potential for I'll that. I'll take right I'll take this little niche. Yeah. You know, people that want to grow in this manner. Mm-hmm. If you want to grow in some other, that's great. Yeah. But for that's this niche, and um, I think that's why in my ministry, uh, it's true that it's a particular people that yeah. you know that want that think maybe in a certain way and want to grow in a certain way too. Yeah. Yeah, but it was hard, but not to the point where I'm frustrated or anything like that. Because I always thought I really have nothing to lose, but so much to gain in okay. this. Yeah, like someone is encouraged. Someone, you know, now reads the Bible every day. For me, that's a win. I really didn't have anything to do. It's not like a startup company where I put like two million dollars and I'm nervous because I'm gonna lose out. There wasn't really much. You know, and like I said before, because it it's a calling for me, pastoral yeah. uh, ministry. So for me, it was like just natural. You know, I'm just doing it differently, doing it differently. And I remember Pastor Dave saying to me, Melissa, you know, sometimes things just look different. Hmm. So things can look different. Church can look different. But, you know, don't worry about that, you know. Um, so uh, do you know what I'm naming this episode? What? It's from friends. Pivot! Oh my pivot. gosh. <laughs> You're talking about transitions, right? Yeah, you know, I rarely use that word pivot, but when I look at my life, maybe have pivoted a little bit. Yeah. Not, um, Dude, that, that, that move with life and grace is a pivot. It is. It is. But this is, this is how incredible it is. When I did pivot, I was, I was able to draw all the skills and experience that I had from previous seasons. Well, and yeah. I think God doesn't launch us into a new season completely disregarding everything that he's yeah. done in us before. Like, I've always wanted to be in movies. That's never going to happen. But, like, God closes so many well, doors on that. That's, but that's what I mean. God's, like, not going to make you a movie star. But you're going <laughs> to be on a podcast with Tirza, right? So, okay. One last thing, because we are out of time. Oh, sorry. But, no, no, no. Don't I knew don't this apologize. was going to happen. <laughs> I'm right. also thinking, hmm, I'm going to probably <laughs> splice this into two episodes. But, um, so for people who are going through transitions in their life right now, 
And maybe there's there's the Holy Spirit telling them, okay, it's time to pivot. <laughs> yeah. Like, pivot. Yeah. I'm just in, I'm envisioning Ross yeah. right now. Um, but they're afraid of saying those yeses. Mm. What do what do you have to say for them? What would you mm. what nugget of wisdom would you like to <laughs> share to them? Okay, before I say just try. Mm-hmm. Um, I always say to people I mentor, God gave us a brain mm-hmm. and logic, the rationale, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, your reasoning. So do your homework, right? Do your homework, what's involved in, in this pivot. Mm-hmm. I say include people that are knowledgeable on the area that you want to pivot into. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of background work first, you know. Sometimes it's due if, diligence. Due, due diligence. diligence. Sometimes yeah. it's you know when people pivot, you think it was an overnight thing, you know. But it's not. There's a lot you of you wake up, you're like, oh, yeah. it's time for a change. There's a lot of prayer. There's a lot of consulting with people and prayer then, some more. Prayer some more, and then like you fail, you pray some more, and you succeed, you know. Um, but you do at one point have to say, I'm going to do it. I'm mm. going to try, right? Um, I am a risk averse kind of person, so you I You are? I am really. People think risk averse is like when you when you don't want to be too uh, too much of a risk taker, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually very calculating. Really? Okay. Yes. I don't know that. No, but it's, well, it's also you it seems you're, like you've been trying to tell people, "Oh, I say yes to like that's not really a I, risk, risk averse." No, no, enough. but what I mean is like I take calculated risks. Okay. When I say yes, you research yes, the living been daylights like, out of it. Yes, I've been like zen, I've been mode, <laughs> like I've been like, you know, on, on my knees, everything. It's like, done. yes, you like, know, you know, yeah. it's just that I had to fast forward the story. Say, say yes, yes right, yes. you know, but there's a lot of stuff that goes before that. Um, but at one point, you do have to, some people do all of that and don't move. Yeah. So they're like, they're on their knees, fasting, blah, 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 but there's no action. Yes. They're paralyzed by their own God, analysis. if you want me to move, you have to physically yes. move me. You have to do thing. it, right, yeah. you know. So I would say, um, do that, mm-hmm. but also be, I think the closer you are to God, the more you see certain signs and confirmations yeah. of where God wants to take you. Yeah. So keep your eyes open to the things happening in your life, the people that God brings into your life. It kind of gives you indication of whether you should, should not. Mm-hmm. And I know this sounds cliche, but you just have to be courageous. Uh, and, and I think the worst is imposter syndrome, right? Yeah. Is in, right? Um, everybody goes through that. Even the most, you know, professional and, and the rookie, everyone goes to that. So if you feel it, it's not pathetic or anything. I, you know, sometimes you feel Thank like you. Yeah, Thank you. it's actually a normal response to like new environments, mm. new roles, you know. Um, but again, you go to your faith. Like I remember saying to myself, God, but you call me to this. Yeah. And so you're going to give me the skills. I believe you're going to help me. I, I don't do it that well right now, but... I need you to help me increase my capacity. Yeah. So God does his thing, but we do our thing and we yeah. partner. And then yeah, you need like, ah. in order to be able to do that leap of faith, you have to leap. You do, right? <laughs> at, at some point. You and have I always to say to myself, if I move and I fall fat on, flat on my, flat on my face, God's there mm-hmm. like with me. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be okay, yeah. you know. And what I love is, like you say, okay, j- you, we need to be courageous. And what God does offer us is, like, you know, in, in the Bible it says, take courage. Yes. And so if you need courage, take, take it. courage yes. from Him. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you're, if you're in Christ, just being in the Word is so crucial. Yeah. In my, um, during the pandemic, we couldn't really be in community. Mm-hmm. But I always, used to always tell people I mentor Read your Bible. Yeah. Like, right. meditate on the Word. It's going to supernaturally increase your courage and your confidence. Mm. Like, yeah. I can't explain it. Like, but try it. Right. God's <laughs> Word changes life. Try it. It's not That's just right. a tagline, guys. Like, you know. Well, anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. me. I just need to have you here again because we have a lot of things to talk about. Yes. Uh, but again, thank you so much. And if you want to check out uh, Life and Grace Project, we'll have the link and like Yay. how you can you, you contact them, etc. cetera. Uh, because like, I've, I've gone through some, been, of, yes, some of her some like, Bible studies and stuff. So it's wonderful. And thank you so much for joining us. So don't miss a beat. We'll see you next time and take a beat. Bye-bye.